Hello, Physics 30s. I just want to take a minute and clarify lenses for you. Uh, as you'll see, the math is exactly identical to uh, mirrors. So with lenses, you only need to know two different types. Um, there's a, a concave or diverging lens, and there's a convex or converging lens. You'll see on the most of the diplomas and even my testing too, um, we tend to just use diverging and converging. And really the reason for that is because that's what the, that's what happens to the light. So as, as light, and I know these diagrams aren't amazing, but as you can see, as light enters here uh, on a diverging lens, it diverges. So the light is, is spread out like that as it comes through a diverging lens and just the opposite happens in a converging lens. So converging lenses are just like magnifying glasses. That's, um, the easy example uh, which you probably all played with so uh the if we are drawing ray diagrams which um are helpful to understand what happens to the light what i need you to understand with lenses is the reason the light acts the way it does is because of refraction um, as light would come in to a um a lens like this inside the lens there'd be a little bit of refraction and then there would be you know uh or then there'd be it would bend again as it came out of the glass and back into air um, but to keep it simple we just try to use really thin lenses all the time so that this interaction right in here is not too dramatic and then it tends to follow the rules that are indicated in most of the uh, examples for lenses uh, we would use the same setup. The main thing you need to note here for lenses is there's two focal lengths. So uh, we obviously have a curvature here, and then the focus for that would be an F, lowercase f, and then the same thing on this side, and there'd be another one here. So um, lenses have two focal lengths, and then, of course, then they'd have two centers, and we still use the principal axis, cutting it in half. There's still a vertex in the middle. So uh, in that sense, those are the pieces of a, um, a kind of the analysis for a lens. And um, this exercise wants to place an object that's five centimeters high and place it at those locations in front of a convex lens whose focus in this case is 20 centimeters. Okay. So, uh, oh, sorry, the, the, Oh, not the focus, sorry, the center is 20 centimeters. So anyway, um, just as a matter of quick overview, um, we can just discuss this because it's already been done. The, the same rules that you would use in a, in a mirror drawing, you'd use exactly the same rules with some modification in terms of, you know, all rays that come in parallel to the principal axis should reflect through the focal length, which they do in a mirror but there's no reflection in a lens. So in this case, the rays go through the lens and then they go into the focal length on the other side. So let's just show you those really quick and I'll start at the bottom one first. So here um, we are outside of the center. Okay, so you see that we're um, beyond the center and we stick the object right there in red. Rays of light, uh, the, the, the darker blue ray um, hits is parallel to the principal axis, but after it hits the lens, then it goes through the focal length, just like that. Okay. And uh, the lighter blue one um, initially goes through the focal length. And then when it hits the lens, it bends per or it bends parallel to the principal axis. And another one, if you really want, we could draw a line that goes through the vertex, okay? Because if a ray of light went through the vertex, it would not refract. Basically, we're assuming a thin lens for all of these. Um, basically, it would just pass straight through the vertex. So you can see here we have convergence. And what we make is a real image, as it notes, because um, there is physically light there. And if, again, if you stuck a little, you know, instead of stuck a sheet of paper right there, um, you would see an, a flipped or an inverted uh, image. And so in this case, uh, the image is real 
it's inverted and it's diminished. It's actually smaller, okay, than the actual object. Uh, as we move up into this middle example, now we're right on the center of curvature. You can see that there, right on the center of curvature. And the image that's produced is actually the same height, but it's upside down still. Uh, so there, you can see that they're the same size and it actually appears on the center. So that's that uh, hopefully makes sense in terms of it being parallel. Then we come up, if you just get inside the center, now we're in between the center and the focal length, we're right in that range, okay? Now the image, it's still real, um, but now the image is actually larger. So we would say the image is enlarged, it's still real and it's still inverted, it's still upside down. So the principle with lenses, and specifically this is just with the converging lenses, as soon as you get on the focal length, this is where things flip. And actually, if you remember from the other one, if you stuck the, you know, we've got the, the object right on the focal length. If it's right on the focal length, um, the image is actually undefined because if we apply all these rules, you know, like we, we draw, this one comes in here and then it's supposed to go through the focal length and so on. Um, if we apply those rules, there's no convergence on either side neither virtually, virtually it would be back up in here, right? That's that's um, where the uh, where you would not expect to find an image because the rays of light are passing through the lens. But anyway, so there's no convergence on either side and the image is basically undefined. I'm not sure if it's really possible to put something perfectly at the focal point and make it disappear, but I guess in theory that's possible. So, but this is what happens when you get inside the focal length. So. Now this real object, again in red, is um, positioned inside the focal length. So we have the focal length here and there's the distance to the lens or whatever. And that's exactly where this object is being placed. If we follow the, the rules, and in this one, we actually, you can note we didn't have an option here. We had to draw one through the vertex um, because I couldn't actually, yeah, there really isn't another one to, um, I can't fit another one in here. but the blue uh, ray of light actually passes through the focal length. And what we can do is extrapolate those back. Okay, so you see that obviously is done there. And the blue one is done as well. And they converge actually on a virtual image. Really, this should be like dotted lines or whatever to emphasize that it's virtual. But anyway, I'm not, I horribly sketched that. The point is, this is what a magnifying glass does. With a magnifying glass, you bring an object inside the focal length. Like you get, you get, the, the, you get the magnifying glass close to the object. And what you see is a virtual image. You're seeing the object, but magnified dramatically. And so in this case, the image is virtual, but it is... Uh, it's upright or erect and it's enlarged. Okay, I'm just writing that in there. So the point is that um, the image, it flips. So you get inside the focal length and everything flips. So it, it stops being a real image. It start, it's now a virtual image and it's no longer upside down. Now it's right side up and, it can all, and it's also enlarged in this case. So um, very useful applications, obviously, any of you that are look to become uh, optometrists or eye doctors, you will understand this very, very well. So um, the same formulas apply for dealing with lenses as with mirrors. But in these notes here, I actually, the, I, I should have changed this beforehand. I really don't like um, these two comments here because it says, that the focal length is positive if it's in front of the lens. Well, and it's negative if it's on the other side. What's a little confusing about that is there's a focal length on both sides, right? See, we've got, uh, so how do we know which one is which? So um, if you have a focal length on both sides, what we, what we look at is um, after the lens. So after the light hits the lens, does it go through the focal length? And if it does, then the... Um, then F would be positive in the formula, okay? So for a 
for a converging lens, F is always positive. Okay, for that reason. So, you know, when you're 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 dealing with um, the the formulas for a lens, the focal length is always positive for a converging lens. Um, for a diverging lens, it's actually negative, and I'll show you that in a second too. So, I added this here. F is positive if the light physically passes through that point, and F would be negative if light, or light rays are not physically at that point. I guess we should add this is after um, passing through the lens. If not that you'd need to write that, but um, the simple part is that uh, converging lenses have positive focal lengths and diverging lenses have negative focal lengths. Uh, Apologize for all this detail. There's a ton of detail with mirrors and lenses, um, but the math itself isn't terribly uh, complex. The catch here too, though, um, in this one, I really should have added this well. This is missing a negative in front of the DI. Eight, the, the, our, our seven dwarf formula, the high ho di do formula, um, the DI is negative, okay? But it, it works exactly the same. Just to show you quick on the diverging lens, here's, here's one right here. Um, it does have uh, two focal lengths. You got one right here and right here. But you'll note that as light comes in, you know, we got the, the, the blue one coming in, it diverges, okay? And yes, this other one goes right through the vertex, but you'll note there's no, there's no convergence over here. The convergence is extrapolated back. Uh, that blue one, I'll maybe just clear all that off so you can see without my drawing. Um, but it converges back right here and that's the only convergence. And it, because it's a virtual convergence, like there's phys, rays of light aren't physically converging there, then you get a virtual image. And for, um, for diverging lenses, um, the image is always um, upright. It's always virtual and it's always diminished. And if you're, if you're catching that now, that is the same as a, um, a diverging mirror, okay? In a diverging mirror, right? The big bulging mirrors that you see in the convenience stores and everything. Um, the image is always upright. It's always diminished, like it's always smaller, and it's always virtual, okay? So that's the cool parallel. And um I think that's illustrated even just a little bit more down here. Uh, so yeah, again, those formulas, sorry, uh, the same corrections we made on the previous page, you should make them here if you're keeping track of that. But um, so uh, the, the summary here, I really, really like this summary. It's the best one I've seen in any of the notes I've ever come across. Uh, it's comparing mirrors and lenses. And um, it shows here that, um, it shows the different positions that an object could be at. So if it's at position five, position four, three, and so on, then it's describing what the image will look like. So these are the image characteristics at all of those locations, okay? So starting at five, if you wanna look at that at five, the image would be real, it would be diminished, and it would be inverted. Um, for a concave or converging mirror. And as we just reviewed with the lenses, I know we have to be careful talking about both of these, lenses have exactly the same characteristics, okay? So that's why it's, it's showing that a, a convex or converging lens has the same um, image descriptions at those positions as a converging mirror. So those two uh, line up and then the easy one that I think is easier to remember is the diverging mirror. Okay, there it is, a convex diverging mirror. The image is always virtual, it's always diminished, and it's always erect, easy peasy. The convex, or sorry, the concave or diverging lens, remember they both diverge. So that's sort of the parallel, I think. That's why it's a little easier to remember them because diverging is diverging. Lens or mirror doesn't matter. Um, converging uh, lens or mirror doesn't matter. Um, they have the same image characteristics. So that's just there for you to review. Sometimes you can answer questions about lenses just because you know 
where the object is positioned. Because if you know you're inside the focal length, then you know that the image is going to be, uh, it's going to be virtual, it's going to be enlarged, and it's going to be up, it's going to be upright. And so if you're looking at the answers and it gives you a bunch of numbers, but it does say that one of, one of them says that the image is actually upright and it's virtual, then that's the answer. Uh, but anyway, you'll see that as you go through some of those practice reviews. Hopefully that was, that was helpful.